welcome to December 20th, I think. We're close. It is oh the 20th. Oh my goodness. Do y'all realize how close Christmas is? Okay. Y'all missed my weather. Oh, yeah, five days. Y'all missed my weather, weather report yesterday. Yeah. It is going to be in the 40s. It is an absolutely gorgeous day outside. There is a kind of a pink haze. Do you see the pink as in the sky? I'm trying to see the current temperature. Oh, it's in the, it's good. The high is going to be in the 40s. It's probably in the 20s right now. I think it's lower than that. But y'all, Christmas Eve, if I don't like being cold ever, but if there's ever a day in the 365 days a year that I want it to be cold, there are two days, Christmas Eve and Christmas. I want it to be cold. And Christmas Eve is going to be in the 60s. 26 degrees right now. It's cold outside now. It's beginning to look a lot <laughs> and that like is Christmas. Fahrenheit. Everywhere we go. Somebody sent me, one of my viewers, one of you guys sent me that clock over there so I would be able to tell you. The weather report. Celsius and Fahrenheit mm -hmm. because I wasn't sure how to calculate it. And um, and once, every time I thought I had it figured out, I didn't have it figured out. But uh, now my clock is behind the tree in the presence, and I can't hit the button to see if what Celsius is. So you're just getting Fahrenheit. But anyways, it's jelly time. Do you want to open the box this you time? You've always been opening the box. It's the 20th. 20th, right here. Lower right corner. Read the door. The door says jar, no, far <laughs> of joy. It's either far or jar. I can't remember. I can't. Jar, jar, of joy. jar of joy. Jar of joy. Jar of joy. I think I need to loan him these. <laughs> it's getting worse. Uh, Do I need to put it on? Yes, you need to read that one. Quince spread. Mm -hmm. Quince. Never had quince. Never had quince. Never read Quince before. <laughs> <laughs> Quincy. You remember the show Quincy? Do y'all remember the show Quincy? No, I don't. <gasps> you don't remember Quincy? I remember Quincy? the steakhouse. Oh, yeah, there was a big fat yeast roll. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was their th they had the motto. Yeast. That's they big, big yeast roll. Yeast roll. Yeah, I remember that. Quincy's. Isn't it amazing that the chain restaurants that used to be in business that are no longer in business? Are there any Shoney's still in business? There, there probably are a few. <clears throat> Do y'all know if there's Shoney's still in business? That was I, that was one of my favorite memories on New Year's Eve. My family would go out to eat at midnight, and we'd go to Shoney's because they were open all night. And we would go to we go sit at Shoney's and bring in the New Year at Shoney's. I don't know why I remember that, and I don't think we did it every year. Just whenever. But. Or it was my mama's side of the family. I remember that. All right, here we go. Smells fruity. I think I got more on my bread than I did yours. Kind of citrusy. It's not bad. Let me see your palm. Probably not my first choice. Did you see me stick it's better my, than last night. Better than yesterday. Did you see me stick my nose in my jelly? <laughs> Trying to smell it. We're going to look up Quince. I bet you still got some viewers laughing about me being strong and carrying $100 worth of groceries in one hand. I bet they're still laughing. It's like a cross between an apple. It looks like apple, a pear. Apple and a pear. Oh, it looks like a pear. The Quince is the sole member of the genus Sedona. <coughs> I don't know. The raw fruit has a very tart flavor, much like a tart green apple, but more sour. When cooking in the fruit into jelly or other formats, quite a bit of sugar is What's needed. What's place of origin, does it say? <clears throat> okay, that's enough. We can educate know. them later on. We'll you can Google it, it too. You can Google it too. It looks like a yellow pear. That's yeah. what it looked like. She must not have liked it. I did. I wanted to research it. Mm -hmm. it I like that better than the guava. I do too. Now, what's up for today? What we got? More goodies. What more time? bacon. What are we going to make? 
I'm going to make fudge, several batches of fudge. I've got one more batch of brickle to make. I'm going to make my peanut butter and Ritz. And then I think I'm done with the sweet stuff. And then tomorrow is all savory stuff. When are you going to do Chex Mix? That's tomorrow. Okay. I'm going to make my cheese ball tomorrow. I'm going to make my um, artichoke dip. Get it ready to bake. Yeah. Not not bake it, but get it ready to mm -hmm. bake. Um, my Chex Mix, my um, cheese ball, um, my million dollar dip this year that oh, you like. I like that. So um, we have tons of stuff to make. I was going to make, do you think I should make the almond croissants this year? No. No. Okay. Not for the finger foods. Mm -hmm. You're talking about like the one we had in St. Martin? The one I've been making. Yeah. And I bake them and put them powdered sugar on yeah, them? Yeah, no, no, no. That, they're just, you You can't do enough quantity for the number of people true. that are coming. That's true. Yeah. That's true, but they're delicious. They are good. They're good. That That's for if you're going to have like 10 or 12 people. You yeah, know? Or, or like a, that might be Christmas morning. That would be really good. Mm-hmm. So, yep. Okay, well, we're going to get started with the day. He's got a little bit of farm work, and then he's going to come wrap presents while I cook and bake. So, I'm on. If they get wrapped, you're going to have to do it because I got too family. much going on. Instead of having two left feet, I got two left hands. That's true. Yep. All right, guys, we'll see. We'll Not see true. you in a little while, and uh, I'll probably be in the kitchen. So let's start this morning with fudge. And let us let me just say that the most important thing is to be sure you have everything out, everything ready. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm getting everything out. I've got a little bit of water here. That's just to get any sugar crystals off the side of the pan. And um, get your thermometer. I, some recipes say boil for five minutes and just time it. I do. That's normally how I roll. I like the timed stuff, but um, with this, I do like to go by a thermometer. Uh, I hear there's a really cool thermometer that's digital that is very accurate, and I got to look it up. But um, first, I'm going to um, get kind of clean up my clean dishes over here, put them away, and um, then we're going to get started on fudge. That's my favorite thing. Besides party mix, fudge is my favorite thing at Christmas. So let me clean up and I'll meet you back right here at the stove. <clears throat> so hopefully the sunshine from that window, I may have to go over there and close the blinds. I hate closing the blinds. I love it bright and airy in here, but it does mess with filming sometimes. So I have all my ingredients here and ready to go. So you're gonna start with a stick and a half of butter, which is, I think it's three-fourths cup of butter. So if you don't, if yours don't come in sticks, it's three-fourths cup of butter. Um, after Christmas, I have a dairy that's gonna give me, or I'm gonna buy some cream and we're gonna make our own butter. I'm super excited about that. I get asked a lot, do our cows, are they dairy cows? Or do I not? Why do I not get milk from our cows? Well, our cows are beef cows, and we their milk is purely for their calves. Um, I mean, I guess you could you could um, milk them, but they're not considered dairy cows, so um, we do not get milk from our cows. So I like to get my butter started melting first. Um, and with a gas stove, I have found that sometimes the flame comes up around the side. You want it to stay underneath as mo much as you can. But I do like to get the butter and the evaporated milk kind of started before I add my sugar. That's just a personal preference. And you need about half a can of evaporated milk and I'm just eyeballing it. I would say fudge is not one of those things you want to eyeball. But I do eyeball the evaporated milk. You need about five, one of the small cans. You remember they used to come in the small cans? I don't know that they still come in the small cans. But, um, and for some reason, it just works better if I get the um, butter melting first. <clears throat> before I add my sugar. And I don't get it completely melted, but I get it almost melted. 
and um, going. So I'm actually going to go ahead now. It's it's on its well on its way to melted. So I'm going to go ahead and add in three cups of sugar. I've already added one. So here we go with two. And three. Now we just want to get that mixed in really well. Continue to melt the butter. <clears throat> And once I get the sugar completely dissolved, then I'll turn the heat up a little bit and get it working towards a boil. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be sure all the sugar is dissolved and the butter is melted, and then I'll turn it up. And at that point, once it's dissolved or working up, I'll put a little brush in here and we're gonna get all these sugar crystals off the sides. You just don't want any grit in your fudge. And sometimes if you don't do this, <clears throat> you can get some grit. Sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't. And we'll just do that occasionally until I'm sure all the sugar is dissolved. You just don't want a gritty fudge. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep working and I'm gonna bring it to a boil and then I'm going to work at getting it to 234 degrees, 234 degrees. And at that point, and listen, I don't have my thermometer touching the bottom and I don't have it, at, I have it right in the middle. So uh, if it's touching the bottom, it can be too hot. The hot, the heat is down there. Up at the top, it could be too cool. So right in the middle is where I like the bottom of my thermometer to be. And um, so, okay, my butter is completely melted. And um, now I'm just gonna bring it up to a boil and I'm gonna wipe down the sides again. Okay, everyone, we are almost at the 200, whoopsie. We are almost at the 234 degrees. Um, now, I, if, if you don't have a thermometer, by all means, do the five minute. Get it to a bowl like this, if you can see what it's doing, <clears throat> and let it go for five minutes. However, I like a thermometer, and that's what I use. And you're stirring constantly because it, you will get little brown flakes. Even no matter how much you stir, you're going to get little brown flakes in here. And that's totally fine. Don't you worry about that. All right, guys. We are almost, almost there. All right. I believe I'm coming off the heat now. We're gonna cut that heat off. And we are gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and move this thermometer. All right, so let's go in with our marshmallow. Let me go in with my chocolate chips. Two cups of chocolate chips going in. A jar, a seven ounce, I believe it's a seven ounce jar of marshmallow fluff. Somebody told me to microwave this, it comes out easier, but I don't like to walk away from my fudge and I figured if I microwave it, it'll be, <laughs> it'll be warm again, I mean cool again before I get ready to use it, so. I just use the scraper. <clears throat> We're going in with some vanilla. And I'm actually gonna stir this up pretty good first uh, before I add my walnuts in. I have a cup of walnuts that's gonna go in. All right, guys, so let's get to stirring and mix this up. Oh. 
look, I made a mess already. I'm gonna move it off my stove so I don't make a mess on my stove. All right, guys, I'm gonna bring you over here. I gotta clean my stove up. And we are just gonna stir, stir, stir. It takes it a while to all come together, but it will, trust me. It will. And you can, by all means, like melt your chocolate chips first, you know, stir them in and then do the marshmallow, or I just dump it all in at one time. The main thing is to get all this marshmallow cream melted. Now I have, it says a nine by 13. I like a little bit thicker piece of fudge. So this is the next size down, smaller than a nine by 13. I don't know exactly what it is. <clears throat> now, when you get it almost broke up and you, you know, just have a few little white streaks, that's when I go ahead and add my nuts, just because the nuts help break down that and I'm using walnuts, They're just regular store-bought walnuts. I don't know if they're black walnuts or English walnuts. I don't know. I just bought walnuts. My next batch will have pecans because that's the last of my walnuts. I prefer walnuts in it, but um, the next batch will have pecans, and then the next batch will be plain. All right, so here we go. And y'all taught me to crinkle up my parchment and pour it, put it in there and it would hold its shape. And so that's what I did. I'm just pouring it in the center, letting it go where it wants to. All right. And it's already, you can kind of see it's creating that film where it's setting up already. So I'm going to um, Get this outside, get this washed up and ready to go again. And this is the pot I like to use. I have a candy pot. My other ones have like a wide lip and the, thermo the thermometer doesn't hook to it very well. So this is the pot I like to use. So I'm gonna scrape, finish scraping this out, wash this up and get ready to make another batch of fudge. So I'm making a recipe I've never made before, so I thought I'd bring you along for it. It is red velvet cheesecake truffles. So that's what I've made, just a box red velvet cake. I've made it in just one of these tin pans. It's sitting out here cooling. It's just hanging out and waiting. So we're gonna get ready with the cheesecake filling, and I'll bring you back once I get everything over here. Okay, so I've got two blocks of cream cheese in here and I'm just gonna, they're softened and I'm just gonna give it a little lift here with my hand mixer. To that, I'm gonna add a nice, generous half a cup of powdered sugar. And we're gonna mix that together. Okay, so now I'm gonna add a splash of vanilla flavoring <clears throat> and two tablespoons of heavy cream. And we're just gonna mix this till it's nice and stiff. Now we're just gonna take my smallest cookie scoop and we're just gonna scoop out little 
balls of these and we're going to put it in the freezer for at least an hour. All right, I'll bring you back when we get these out of the freezer and ready for the next step. Out to the freezer we go. So it's going out to the freezer. I haven't counted them up yet, but Bryant's tasted it and he likes it. So Bryant and I took a little bit of a break. We ran to town, had to turn the heat on in the fellowship hall, and um, I had made a whole pot of coffee before I left and I didn't drink the first bit. Okay, um, anyway, we um, are back and it's time to finish up these um, cheesecake things. And what I've done is I've taken, I just went in with a spatula and grabbed, you know, a little piece of cake. I pull that top part off just because it's solid. You know, it's, it's a kind of a film there. And then, let me get you turned over here. I just take this and crumble it up because I want red crumbles. All right, so I went to the freezer and I got our cheesecake balls right here. And um, they may be too frozen. <laughs> I may have to let them thaw a little bit. In fact, I believe I am. I guess I can press them on there. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to cover our cheesecake balls in this red velvet crumbs. I'm going to set them over there. The cake is super moist. <laughs> All right. So I am just going to continue doing this until I get them all done. Okay, everybody, we're getting ready to head to church, and but I wanted to show you and share with you what all we got accomplished. We got three fudges done. We got Ritz and peanut butter covered in white chocolate. We got the red velvet truffles. We almost have my chocolate covered cherries finished. We have a batch of brickle done, so it has been a very, very productive I've day. I've worked very hard. He actually has worked very hard, but not on the goodies. <laughs> He has worked hard on rapping for me, and if Remember, he'll rap for me, man, I'll I'll just give him. She'll, she'll keep doing goodies. I'll give him kisses like crazy, then I'll keep doing goodies. So let me show you what and all we've got accomplished today. All right, this is our pecan fudge. This is our walnut fudge, and this here is just plain chocolate fudge. So we got three batches of fudge, and I believe. Somebody has been in that fudge. My favorite. <laughs> okay, so here are our Ritz crackers with peanut butter dipped in white chocolate. These are not quite finished, but we are close. Uh, we have to. I'm going to melt this chocolate when we get home, and we'll dip those in chocolate. Here is our pecan brickle, and here is the beautiful red velvet truffle. So. Uh, Bryant did taste one of those, and let's see what he thought. It was delicious. It was really good, and I love cream cheese, so. Yep, it's, it has that cream cheese twang or, or like that cream cheesy flavor to it, so um, it, you, you could adjust the sugar up or down, whatever you think, but um, so yeah, we are tickled pink with what I've got accomplished today. So tomorrow, I, pl I well today, I plan after I do the chocolate dip cherries, I'll dip them. After that, I'm calling it quits on the sweet stuff and we're turning our focus to savory dips, cheese balls, that kind of thing. So that's where we're going to head after today. So the sweet stuff is done. I've got several batches of brickle. I've got the crock pot candy. I've got the lace cookies. We have tons of stuff already made, magic bars. So I think we're good on the sweets. So now we've got to turn our 
attention to the savory. Let's head to church, though, right now. Let's turn our attention to Jesus. Well, after church, we have stopped by the Walmart, and Bryant is getting me some jalapenos. And we've got, um, yep, there we go. So I'm looking for parsley and cilantro, and cilantro but I can't find the parsley. Still here. We gotta go down here and look for parsley. I thought that was the organic section down here. We're getting our last minute things. Now he will have to go back out and get us some drinks. All right, let's find the parsley. Hey everybody, welcome to Couch Time and it's time for cheese. It's time for cheese. Hope you've enjoyed today watching all those goodies. Man, did you see those red velvet cake balls? I have not gotten the cherries chocolate dipped yet. That'll probably happen in the morning. Tomorrow. Just because we got we went to the grocery store to get more goodie stuff and it's late. Time for cheese. Time for cheese. Alright, here we go. He's rushing me along. I'm not rushing her along. Today's the twentieth. <laughs> Alright, go ahead, baby doll. These doors are coming apart. Yeah, I might as well just tear it. Don't tear it. All right, do I read it no, or just test no, it? Let's test it. Okay. I'm gonna test it without looking. Okay, here we go. I'm doing what y'all said. Right. It, it kills me. All right, here we go. Blind taste test, here we go. Based on smell, I don't think I like it. Not that bad. I've had worse. That's an Italian season one, isn't it? Mediterranean Gouda. Yeah. You like it? Call me Mickey Mouse. I'll eat my cracker. You know, she loves those crackers. Hmm? You love those crackers. They're very strongly, it's the sesame in them, I think. Mm hmm they give such a strong flavor. I love them. So how'd your day end up today? <clears throat> I really got a ton of things accomplished. I don't know how much I filmed for you guys, but I got a lot accomplished. Yeah. Um, but it was it was really good. The I got three fudges. <clears throat> I gave you some tips on making good fudge. Uh, you know, to have your stuff ready. Um, I made brickle, my last batch of brickle to make, um, the red velvet truffles, chocolate covered cherries, the chocolate covered cherries that I haven't quite got finished yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you know last night we got a letter from somebody from Tuscan? <laughs> I said Tuxin is what I said. Oh, tu <laughs> What'd you say? Tuxin. Tuxin. Instead of Tucson. But I knew it was Tucson. She knew it. It was my fault. I cut through the label. Yeah. But anyway. If y'all have missed that part of the video yesterday, go back. It, like, I totally lose it. When I realized what I said and what the actual name was, I, like, just... It was pretty funny. It was funny. But... It's been a great day. It has. Um, me and Daniel walked chickens this morning. And then after that, we uh, did some cleaning up. Um, had some rain, so we had some things we needed to clean up. Fed some hay. And uh, Daniel took off half day, went shopping. And, yep. And so I... Uh, we ran and got lunch. We ran and got lunch. Let me ask you. Ran do a you, few errands. Do you guys have, where we get lunch, where we got lunch today, it's just a gas station. Yeah. Do y'all have but one they, of... But they got the best they hot got dogs. They got the best hot dogs. Do y'all have a place like that that's just a gas station, just a service station, but it has like really good food in there? Yeah. You can still get a hot dog for $1.49. And, and they'll make it any way you want it. Yeah. And it is so good. Yeah. And so we went there and, I mean, I was loving it because it was so good. But we was just sitting in the gas station. Chilling out, eating a hot dog. And you can get your chips right there because you're in a convenience store. So you just go to the counter and get you a bag of Lay's chips. And they do have fountain drinks. You got a fountain drink. Yeah. It's called the Handy Hugo. Handy Hugo. Yeah. So, but anyway. Best hot dogs room. Got lunch, and then I came home, did some ministry work, and then um, church. Did, I had church. You wrapped, wrapped, wrapped a some, bunch wrapped of presents. Wrapped some gifts for Les. 
Got a bunch more to wrap for me, too. Uh, made several phone calls. Uh, just a busy, busy afternoon. So. Yep. And then we had church tonight. It was wonderful. Yep. So. All right, and then grocery it. store. Not so wonderful. I freeze in the our Walmart here. I don't know about your Walmarts there or wherever, but I freeze. Like, I'm miserable. Like, I don't want to spend money in there because I want to get out because it's cold. But tell me if your Walmart's like that. I got nothing. Wear coat. I did. I was dressed. I was bundled up, but I still freeze. When I first had my hair cut, do you remember? My ears hurt. Ears got cold, yeah. They, I mean, they would hurt. They were so cold. Yeah. Mine but, do too. <laughs> That's why I wear a toboggan. All right, guys. Well, we will see you tomorrow. It's more goodies. We're going. Wrap. I said that's a wrap. I didn't say hurry up. I just said that's a wrap. We're gonna be um, going savory tomorrow. I will finish the chocolate covered cherries, and then we're going with all the savory stuff. So sausage balls. We're gonna get them ready, get them in the freezer, and all kinds of stuff. So what else we're gonna do? join us tomorrow. I don't know. A bunch of stuff. Artichoke dip. Oh yeah. Cheese balls. That's good. I like dips. artichoke dips. Million dollar dip, lots of things. Oh, I gotta put that on your list too. I thought of something to go on his grocery list. <laughs> There's a few things he has to get like tomorrow or the next day. Yep. So thank you for joining us right here on The Farming Pastor's Wife. Give us a thumbs up, give us a like, leave a comment. Tell us about your little hole in a wall restaurant you'd like to go to. So. And if your Walmart's cold or not. <laughs> I wanna know, they need to turn the heat up. It's the freezer section. No, the whole place is cold. Oh, geez Louise. Tux. All right, guys. She's from Tuxkin. <laughs> no, we'll see you tomorrow. Idea. Bye, y'all. You tell if the grease was hot. Oh, enough. remember, if the grease is hot enough, you, you can, can fry, fry anything, anything. Except for Except in Walmart. Walmart, where it's too cold. Good night. <laughs>